I think that this can be a hard question for a lot of people, but it's also the one that to me just proves definitively how important scrap paper is going to be on this reading section. Yes, if you're taking the test online, you can cross out answer choices, you can highlight, and there's this annotate feature that lets you type things. But it's limiting, right? Because if you're typing on like an iPad, it's kind of a pain. And there are, you'll see that we don't always want to have to type stuff. We want to be able to see it and kind of interact with it. So having a pencil and paper is much better. So I'll try to show you what I would write on pencil and paper uh, as I do this question. So first and foremost, let's focus on the question, right? Which finding, if true, would most directly support the researcher's hypothesis? So what's the hypothesis? What's going to support it? Researchers hypothesize, oh, perfect, love it when they just get to the point. Researchers hypothesize that a decline in the population of dusky sharks near the mid-Atlantic coast of North America led to a decline in the population of eastern oysters in the region. Okay, so decline in sharks is a decline in oysters. Okay, see, I'm writing this in my scrap paper. A little arrow is hard to do when you're typing, right? You got to go to the emojis or something. No, pain in the neck. We're going to do it on a paper. It's so much easier. Um, okay, dusky sharks do not typically uh, consume eastern oysters, but do consume cow nose rays, which are the main predator of the oysters. So here's where I'm going to go, okay, the sharks are doing something with the rays, and then the rays are going after the oysters. This is kind of all I get from this. But notice, it's it's very visual. It's very mathematical. It's, it's not like we're just highlighting words that are important to us. We're trying to understand a relationship. I, I would still call this a dumb summary, right? Um, I use those in all sorts of places. And the arrows are a perfect example of just let's capture the trend in the simplest way possible. Now, this is so helpful for me. You're gonna, I'm going to just show you what I see in these answer choices. Um, choice A. Declines in the regional abundance of dusky sharks prey other than cow nose rays are associated with regional declines in dusky shark abundance. I am lost. That was just nonsense to me. Now, I, I can kind of maybe start to dumb summarize that, right? So decline in uh, the regional abundance, a decline in abundance, that's a terrible way to phrase something, a decline in the prey other than the rays, so other prey are associated with regional declines in the sharks. Well, I see the decline in the shark, so that part checks out with my dumb summary, but other prey besides the rays, that just wasn't in there. So I don't know. This doesn't, this might be true, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't match this idea that I got out of the passage. So I don't know yet. But I summarized it enough that maybe I have an idea. Okay, so it checks off one box. Let's look at B. Eastern oyster abundance tends to be greater in areas with both dusky sharks and cow nose rays than in areas with only dusky sharks. Wow, okay. So, how would I summarize this? More rays, or sorry, more oysters. Um, more oysters with both sharks and rays. With sharks and rays. And less when there's only sharks. Less when less oysters when sharks. I, see, again, I don't understand it. I'm trying, and maybe even I'm trying too hard to summarize it, because if you're having trouble understanding it, it's probably not a good sign for the choice. We have to learn when our confusion is actually a sign that something is just wrong. So let's keep going, and I think maybe that'll make it clear how this all works. C, consumption of eastern oysters by Kano's rays in the region substantially increased before the regional decline in the dusky shark abundance began. Well, the big red flag for me here is we're talking about time, right, before, right? It's, it's talking about things happening at various points, but I don't remember reading about the time going by. Um, it's just saying things increase and decrease. I don't know when any of this stuff happened, so we're introducing an idea of time. This is similar to when I introduced the idea of other prey in choice A, right? I don't like that. I don't like when the choice contains some idea that's not contained in my dumb summary. It's possible my dumb summary was too dumb and missed an important idea, but there's not a lot in these lines. I feel like I got it all. Let's look at D. Kano's rays have increased in regional abundance as dusky sharks have decreased in regional abundance. Okay, so why would that happen? Well, the decrease in the sharks, that's definitely in there, right? So that's that works. 
Now, the increase in the raise, okay, that's not in there. And so now I have to ask myself, of the two ideas that are missing from choice A, the other prey, and from choice D, the raise being increased, like which one makes sense? Well, if I were just blindly guessing at this point, I would pick D because it's the only one that's just about the stuff that the passage is about. Sharks, oysters, rays. That's it. No new characters, no new concepts. It just kind of sticks to what they talked about. It's a good bet, right? Why insert new information? But if I can prove the, the direction of the arrow for the rays, that would be really good because then I could feel good about this choice, you know, as being right, not just being you know, statistically more likely to be right as being provably right. Um, why would the population of rays go up? Well, as we saw in our little dumb summary over here, the sharks eat the rays and the rays eat the oysters. So if there were fewer sharks, then it probably makes sense that there'd be more rays because they're not getting eaten because the sharks are not there. And then if there were more rays, it would make sense that the oysters would go down because they're the thing that eats the oysters. Right, so notice I'm, the arrow that matters for this answer choice is not talked about in the passage itself. This is, this is a good example of that word inference, right? What, what are we inferring from the information that we're given? We ha are given a bunch of dots and we need to connect those dots. But it's not a huge leap, right? It's definitely something that's more just like common sense, right? The, the thing that eats the rays, there's less of that, therefore there's gonna be more rays and then if there's more rays, the, whatever the rays eat, the oysters, those are going to go down. So that matches very easily with what the, the passage was saying. And I could probably try to come up with some story to justify choice A or C or B or whatever, but I, I promise it's already going to be more complicated just because all of those choices involve ideas that were never really talked about in the passage itself. So if you are between two choices, go with the one that's just easier to justify, the one that involves fewer sentences, less proof, just more kind of intuition. That's probably right. Um, this is a hard question, though. And you can see, like, why I said at the beginning, having scrap paper is helpful. Do I really want to be kind of like typing and retyping my annotations as I'm doing this question? No. I want the flexibility to write wherever and whatever I want. And so having a scrap paper to do that is going to give me that flexibility to think flexibly about this weird situation.